Brown dwarfs are weird. They're these objects that sit somewhere between the size of Jupiter and big planets and something like small stars. But it's not quite right to think of them either as super massive extra giant planets or as weirdly small failed stars. They're their own thing and their own thing is very weird. One of the most weirdest things about them is their size. Think of Jupiter. Jupiter's pretty massive, and also Jupiter is pretty large. Think of a star. Even the smallest stars, like the, the smallest red dwarf stars. The stars are much more massive than Jupiter, and also much, much wider, and much bigger, and much fatter than Jupiter. What about a brown dwarf? A brown dwarf is eh, maybe tens of times more massive than Jupiter. So think of something that's 50 times the mass of Jupiter, but barely any bigger than that planet at all. Like, maybe 10% bigger, 50, 20% tops, where you could put a brown dwarf and Jupiter right next to each other, and they wouldn't look much different in terms of size, even though the brown dwarf is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 times more massive. The reason for this is the formation of the brown dwarf itself. So I haven't done an episode on star formation in general, and you should ask if you're curious about it, but stars form from clouds of gas and dust that are much, much more massive than the stars themselves. So you'll have a giant cloud that contains enough material to manufacture hundreds or even thousands of stars. And piece of it, of it will branch off, pinch off, and start collapsing. And in one of these individual pinched off bits, that's where you start popping out stars. And in normal star formation, as a piece of that cloud condenses and shrinks down, it heats up because that's what stuff does when you compress it into a smaller volume. And it can release this heat through the radiation. It starts glowing. And that glowing radiation cools down that cloud, allowing it to condense even further. It cools off, condenses even further. Now, what happens in a star or a protostar as it's beginning to form is that the core gets so intensely dense, it's so dense inside the core that radiation gets trapped. So even though you have the surrounding material still wanting to fall in onto this nice dense core, the core heats up insanely. And eventually the pressures and temperatures get so high, you get nuclear fusion going and a star is born. And so in the core of that newborn star, you have a tremendous amount of energy being released through nuclear fusion, and that is preventing the further collapse of all this material. So you get an equilibrium, you get a balance. The fact that a star is constantly blowing up in its core prevents it from shrinking down further. But this doesn't happen with a brown dwarf because a brown dwarf doesn't have enough mass to trigger the nuclear reactions of turning hydrogen into helium, which is what we call a star. So this process of heating from the inside never happens. So it, this cloud of dust that eventually will lead to a brown dwarf is able to shrink down much smaller because there's nothing to resist it. There's nothing to resist it until you get to the point uh, that the object itself is supported by something we call electron degeneracy pressure. And I know that's a really loaded jargon term. Don't worry about it too much. I've done episodes before on degeneracy pressure. Feel free to check those out on this channel if you want. But it's it's you can only pack so many electrons in a box. That's what it's telling you. It's a fundamental rule of quantum mechanics. Don't want to dig into it, but if you try to pour a bunch of electrons into a box, you can only squeeze them down so much before they say, I'm not being squeezed any further. And this is able to resist the crushing weight of gravity, and this prevents the brown dwarf from shrinking even smaller. And this is why the brown dwarf is able to be much, much smaller than a star, even though it may not be that much less massive than a star. But the interior of a brown dwarf is very different 
than the interior of something like Jupiter. Something like Jupiter, a planet, has a, probably a rocky core, probably a nice thick mantle, and then the layers and layers of hydrogen and helium atmosphere that envelop that core. Brown dwarfs don't have that core. They form through a different process. They form more like stars, in which is that they're formed from direct collapse of clouds and scrunching down to get smaller. Even though they form like stars, they end up only being the size, roughly, of the biggest planets. So there you go. Brown dwarfs are weird, and perhaps their size is one of the weirdest things about them. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up thingy, like thingy. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs up anyway. I'm mean, Come on, just be a friend. And you can also help keep these episodes going with my patreon.com slash PM Sutter. There's a link, and there's a link to a random other episode floating around my head right now. And I will see you next time.